What if you could move your kill chain to the left? I'm here today to talk about the latest addition to the MITRE ATT&CK framework and what it means for you and your organization and our world of deception technology. I'm Dan Brett, the CSO and founder of Countercraft. Today I'm going to be talking to Naheem Fazal, our head of cyber threat intelligence. We're going to be looking at what this MITRE integration in our product means for your organization today. Hi, I'm talking with Naheem today about kill chains and how moving to the left on them is a fantastic idea. Hi, Naheem. Hi, Dan. Right, Naheem, so what can you tell us about what kill chains are and what's the connection with the MITRE ATT&CK framework? So a kill chain is a means of modeling the behavior of an adversary. And what the kill chain does is it breaks down the different stages of the attack. Now, the extreme right of the attack would be where adversaries breach the network and they're maintaining persistence on the network and taking data out of the network. And on the extreme left is where we have the reconnaissance uh, and weaponization phase. Wow, that's terrific to know. Okay, so basically the attack, they start on the left-hand side and they kind of move all the way across the attack chain. That's yeah. great. Okay, so why is it good for a business if they can detect and stop attacks up on the left side of that? Okay, it's a very good question. Now, the traditional approaches to security have always focused on detecting attackers once they're actually inside your network. There's a problem with that. And the problem with that is at the point that you detect an attacker inside your network, your BAU activity, your business as usual activity is already disrupted. So if you think about this, um, there's an attacker in the network, there's a said one incident has been created, critical systems are having to be shut down. That is a situation you want to avoid. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to keep all the systems up and running as long as possible. Okay, so I get it. It's a really good idea to move ourselves across the left. So what about using Countercraft? Like, what, what can we do to help companies do that? Because, how, I mean, how on earth can we stop things that happen even outside our network before they've even impacted on what we've got as IT systems? Tell me a bit about what we can do. So what we can do, and this is, in my words, is a revolution in the way that security teams can approach the problem is rather than waiting for a problem to materialize, get ahead of it, move the kill chain to the left by deploying deception assets out onto the internet, distributing breadcrumbs out onto the internet instead of your endpoints, luring attackers to that deception environment and begin to understand how the attacker is going to circumvent infrastructure that they believe belongs to your organization, understand how they may circumvent the security real estate that you have deployed on uh, that asset and understand what digital footprint in the form of IOCs is left behind and what behavioral footprints are left behind in terms of the TTPs that they've, they've left behind. And the TTPs and the IOCs, all of that information links back to the MITRE framework. Wow. So, I mean, it sounds to me like we're really going to be shining a light on all this kind of pre-attack reconnaissance activity that's happening, like before they get to breaching the perimeter and getting onto our networks, right? Uh, absolutely, because you, you as a SOC team, as, a, as an organization, as a wider security organization, you need to understand, you know, when the attackers get onto, a onto a, an asset, a deception asset that they believe is part of your company's infrastructure are they going to for example the first three things what are the first three things that they're going to do are they going to um circumvent the edr are they going to delete log files have you got security controls that would be effective at mitigating those uh, attack vectors or thirdly dan as we've recently seen in the solar winds incident the attackers actually dropped onto the asset they compromised and they did absolutely nothing for two weeks now what i'm interested in and what i haven't come across but which the countercraft deception automated deception platform would have been able to answer what exactly were they doing in those two weeks because it's i certainly find it difficult to believe that the attackers were on that asset and absolutely nothing happened they might be just lying low, you know? <laughs> exactly. But Dan, that's really interesting. So what we're doing here is we're interjecting subjective opinion. 
Right. And that's one of the key problems with the um, data sets, the threat intel that's delivered. We, we have a problem. What was going on during that two week period? How can I answer that? You can answer that by using the countercraft deception platform because we are able to observe everything that the attacker does or doesn't do on the deception asset. I know, I agree with that. And I always talk about us detecting, right? And then collecting yeah. and then managing, you know, uh, attacks. And in this case, the detection part, we can actually quantify, you know, account up the number of recon reconnaissance type activities. In the collect, like you said, we can then, you know, once they shift across to some sensing, deception sensing environments, we can actually collect tons of telemetry data about what they're doing, how they're doing it, and what it might mean to your organization. And the third step, manage that, is when you take all that data, much of it in machine readable format, packed all of yeah. it, you can then pass it on and reconfigure other systems. So I think that's what we say, right? When we're talking about moving to the left of the attack chain, what we're talking about is getting this data earlier, quicker than ever before, and using it to reconfigure your, your you know, defensive systems so you're prepared for those attacks, okay? And, and one, just one final point I'd, I'd like to add on top of that, that in this post-COVID world, where the, perhaps the only way you're transacting with your customer base is through your online presence, it's absolutely critical to have cyber resilience built into your um, IT systems. And the best type of cyber resilience is to prevent that network being breached in the first instance. Okay, that's great. Well, listen, Naheem, thanks so much for your insight and joining us today. If you want to see more of these updates or these little chats with our fantastic Canocraft team, don't forget to hit subscribe, okay? Thank you very much for your time. This is uh, Dan signing off and Naheem. Bye-bye from me. Bye bye from us both. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Dan. So I hope that told you what the MITRE framework can do for your organization. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe below to get more of these videos.